Okay, uh, good morning, Miss I and uh, Dex Professor Dexter. So uh, today we'll continue our, actually we'll try to finish module six today. So, uh, so we will have a um, couple more days to finish uh, the homework or homework six. So uh, today we'll talk about the application of QR, of QR factorizations to solving linear systems. So basically, um, almost all problems, um, almost all applied problems are usually um, phrased in the terms of a linear systems. So kahit napaka-komplikado nung application problem na sinosolve natin, uh, what we try to do is to always find a way to linearize it. So, I mean, if it's a nonlinear equation or a polynomial equation of a very high degree, we always try to see if we can reduce the problem down into a linear system uh, because we have a very, uh, a very big uh, literature of ways to solve linear systems. And anyway, linear systems are um, actually one of the most stable uh, systems to solve. Kahit makikita natin later, there could be some problems that will arise from it. But we have developed several ways on how to combat these instabilities caused by, uh, say, machine precision or by the, the very ill-posedness of the problem. So basically, all applications, application problems, we try to write them down as a system of linear equations. Usually, these are very big systems, so kailangan talaga implement siya in a machine. So we always look for ways on how to efficiently and accurately solve this linear systems. And one way to do that, or one basic and fundamental way, is to solve this linear systems using QR factorization. So, ano ba yung problema with the usual way of solving linear equations that we have? Uh, kaya kakailanganin pa nating matutunan yung QR factorization. Well, um, if you have a um, an n by n, um, an n by n coefficient matrix A, you multiply it uh, by the unknown vector x, and then meron kang right-hand side vector B, right? So the easy, uh, I mean, on paper, the easiest way to solve it is to pre-multiply both sides of the equation by A inverse, right? So A inverse times AX equals A inverse B. Then we'll rely on the uh, associativity of matrix multiplication, so we'll have A inverse A times X equals A inverse B, and then A A inverse, or A inverse A is just, uh, um, is just the identity. Sir, sir yeah. excuse yes. me. Sir, are you showing your screen? Yep. Oh, I can't see. I can see it. How about the others? Because I have my laptop here and I can see my screen. Yes, sir. Nag meron naman po. Ah, okay. okay. Sige, sir. I'll try to. Or check maybe my... I can try um, resharing my screen. Because sakit nga to minsan ni Teams. So, I'll... thank you, uh, sir. Stop presenting. And then share again. Thank you, sir. I can see it now. Okay, yeah. Sakit nga yan ni Teams. Minsan, uh, pag nag-join ka ng konting konti be uh, before I share my screen, medyo. Oh, uh, okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right, yeah. So, I was saying, yeah, na if you have a coefficient matrix A, you have this system. Uh, the On paper, the easiest way is to multiply both sides by the inverse. So, but be careful with matrix multiplication because matrix multiplication is not uh, commutative. So, what we'll do is to pre-multiply by A inverse. So, you multiply or you put an A inverse to the leftmost portion of both sides of the equation. So, be careful with that. Kasi magmamatter din yung dimension ng uh, matrices involved. And then, we'll rely on the uh, associativity of matrix multiplication. So, instead of multiplying A and X first, we can multiply A inverse and A first, and then the answer will be multiplied by X. We want to do that in that order because A inverse A is the identity matrix of the right uh, size times X equals A inverse B. 
and then x equals a inverse b because anything multiplied to the identity matrix will just be itself, right? So on paper, this is a very elegant and a very simple solution. But once we want a, an explicit form for a, uh, for sorry, for x, this would be very difficult, especially for larger systems, because computing a inverse is not an easy task. So even in computers, uh, it will take some time for it to compute a inverse, especially if your uh, matrix A uh, is um, or has a large number of rows and columns, and also it's all uh, it is also prone to uh, to machine errors, surrounding off errors. So usually, we try to avoid using the inverse in solving a linear system, because it's very unstable, very prone to rounding off errors, and to compute ng A inverse. So most of the times, we don't uh, usually uh, rely on the um, on, com on the computation of A inverse by a machine, unless you have a very nice algorithm for computing A inverse, all right? And then there's also one problem about solving systems like AX equals B generally via the matrix inverse. Uh, A might not be invertible at all. So if it not exist yung A inverse, remember, we just have a bunch of criteria when A will be uh, invertible. So if A is, uh, if the determinant of A is not zero, if zero is not a singular value, uh, ano pa ba yan? Uh, if A is full rank, and so on. So if any of those conditions were met, then you're good. But otherwise, if A is not invertible, this solution will, be, uh, will not work, right? Also, if you have a rectangular matrix A, what if A is not square? So say it's an M by N, where M is not equal to N. So definitely A inverse won't exist because the inverse is only defined for, um, for square matrices, right? So there are several problems with the inversion uh, solution for uh, matrix uh, or for linear systems. So one way to, uh, to address these difficulties, so you might have difficulties like instability, uh, A being not invertible or A being not square at all, can be addressed by solving linear systems using a QR factorization. So remember in matrix, um, uh, in linear systems, we often or we often start with AX equals B. You see in equation 67, where A is an M by N matrix with complex coefficients or complex entries, right? So we call A the coefficient matrix. X is an element of uh, C to the N. It's an N by one matrix or an N by one vector. So this is the vector of unknowns. And B, the right-hand side, is an M by one matrix or an M, M vector, M column vector. Uh, so we call it the right-hand side vector. So the thing is, recall that from last time we said that every matrix A has a QR factorization. So we suppose that uh, this matrix A can be factored as Q times R, where Q is an M by M matrix, which is unitary, and R is an M by N upper right or right triangular matrix. So makakuha ka ng QR decomposition. So we can replace this A by that factorization. So we'll have Q times R in here times X equals B. And then the nice thing about the QR decomposition, remember that the Q matrix is, an, uh, is a unitary matrix, right? So it's an M by N matrix, which is unitary, meaning it's unitary, so Q inverse is equal to its adjoint. And again, we have mentioned a lot of times last time that Q adjoint is much easier to compute than Q inverse for general matrices, because the adjoint is simply, you are just repositioning the entries of your matrix and taking the conjugate trans, uh, the, the conjugate, the complex conjugate of all those elements, right? So if it happens that the adjoint is equal to the inverse, then that's one of the best things that you can have in solving linear systems because Q inverse can be computed accurately and uh, efficiently. Because it's a reposition of the elements of coefficient matrix, right? So we'll take advantage of Q being unitary. So we start with this system. We prem multiply both sides by Q adjoint. All right. So I put them on the leftmost portion. And then again, I'll rely on the... Um, 
I'll rely on the uh, associativity of matrix multiplication and multiply Q adjoint and Q first, and then I'll group the Rx together. And then the right hand side is still Q adjoint times B. And again, Q is unitary, so Q adjoint Q is just equal to the identity matrix. The identity matrix multiplied to any other matrix will just give us the second matrix, right? So kaya Rx na lang yung matitira dito equals Q star B. And we'll have our linear system 67 down to the linear system in 68. Now, I'll say that this is still more efficient than computing the matrix inverse. Uh, though you might think, oh, sir, meron ka pang R dun sa kanan, uh, dun sa kaliwa. Then wouldn't we need R inverse to, uh, to, to free the X or to isolate X on one side? Actually, we don't because the matrix R actually might, might not be invertible because the only condition on R is it's right triangular. And if you look at its size, it's M by N, and M is not necessarily equal to N. So R is not necessarily square, all right? But the nice thing about it is that it is right triangular. You will see in uh, our example later that it is just doing a back substitution. And back substitution is primarily a uh, an efficient way of solving a linear system. Okay, hindi natin kailangan mag-invert. Uh, back substitution lang tayo, meaning we go, we solve the last uh, entry of x, and then going up using the previously computed values. And then the right hand side will be will not be a big deal because it's q adjoint times b, so we're simply uh, performing matrix multiplication there. Okay. So again, in summary, what we did here is to transform AX equals B in system 67 into system 68, which is RX equals Q uh, adjoint B. So let's see how we can solve this. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try example 67. So uh, in example 67, we have this linear system, okay? So this is our matrix A, this is our vector of unknown X, and then this is the right-hand side vector B, okay? And uh, solving the system by hand, the actual solution is negative 6, 11, and negative 2, all right? Now, let's uh, try to use QR factorization into uh, in solving the system. Again, we have here, uh, AX equals B in system 69. We want to turn it into RX equals Q adjoint B, right? And then do back substitution, right? So we need first to compute for Q and the matrix R. So we can use the gram schmidt process in our MATLAB code. I'll go later in the code, but let's just see the solution in paper here. So uh, let's, uh, if you apply the classical gram schmidt process, uh, in MATLAB, you can, uh, I'll show you later how to modify the MATLAB code. We have EX65.M, okay? So the matrix Q that we'll get is this guy, okay? Uh, I just displayed the four decimal digits here, but uh, MATLAB uh, uses, uh, I think, 16 or even more uh, decimal digits so, uh, in, computing, um, in computing things inside of it. So, pero nag-round up siya every after operation. So, pero truncated yung display dito. So, kinopya ko lang yung nasa command, win uh, command window ni MATLAB, pero it doesn't mean that MATLAB has just 0 0.5774 as the first element of Q, right? So, marami pa yung decimal digits after 16 or more. And then the R component or the R matrix is this guy, okay? Now, again, um, it's hard to trust machine calculations, especially for the classical Gram-Schmidt process. So what we'll try to do is, uh, I think last time I showed you a, a couple of checks, right? Na kailangan yung tingnan para magarantina na reliable yung ilalabas na result ni, uh, ni MATLAB. So uh, I'm first suspicious about, is it a right factorization for the coefficient matrix A? Okay, and that's the first thing that I'm gonna, I'm gonna check. So here I'll do, uh, I'll measure the error between the QR factorization and the actual matrix A. So 
take q times r minus a. So you can think of it as the absolute error in, or this is the error matrix or the residual matrix in the QR decomposition. And then compute the L2 norm. So big sabihin, minimeasure mo lang gano kalaki yung layo between QR and A. Okay. So in MATLAB, we'll output zero for this, uh, for this, um, for this quantity. So that means insofar as MATLAB is concerned, we have a very, uh, an exact QR factorization. So they yeah, are reliable yung QR factorization. Yeah. Okay. So having that, um, having that um, known, so dahil alam na natin na reliable yung pagkaka QR factorization in MATLAB para dun sa matrix or sa coefficient matrix, we can build up equation 69 and transform it into Rx equals Q adjoint B. Okay. So again, we still have our matrix of unknown here or our vector of unknown. And then I have here the R matrix coming from MATLAB, right? It's a uh, right triangular. So ito yung main diagonal. Lahat ng nasa ilalim ng main diagonal I zero. That's what it takes to be a right triangular or upper triangular. And then this is Q adjoint times B. Okay. And then all we need to do now is to do back substitution. I don't need to compute R inverse even if it's square because again, I don't want to rely on matrix inversion. And the easy way to solve it is doing back substitution, okay? And actually it's efficient, especially for larger systems. So what does back substitution mean? So you simply need to write this in terms of a system of equation. So perform the matrix multiplication. So this row times this column will give us this uh, sum, right? Equals the first component. This guy times this guy and then we'll get uh, a number which should be equal to the second component. That's how we got it. And then the third the uh, row times the entire column of unknowns equals the third component. So usual matrix multiplication. And then you get this system. And you'll see that this system is nice because if we start from the end, that's why it's called back substitution. We start at the back of the, uh, of the system, specifically here. And if we look at this, oh, it's a like a variable. So all we need to do is divide both uh, is to divide both sides by 1.1340. Okay. So doing so will give us x3, the third component of the unknown vector x, to be minus 0.776 or approximately 0.77 negative 0.776. Okay. And then since we know x3. We can plug the value of x3 in here. And so this will be a constant. So the only variable in the second equation would be x2. So kaya, kaya siya back substitution. So we go from the back towards the first equation. All right. So x3 is known. So this guy is a constant. So only x2 is unknown. So it's easy to solve for x2. So x2 will be equal to this guy. And that's approximately 7.9441. Okay, and then now we do. Uh, we know x3, we know x2, so we can go back to the first equation. x2 is known, so that will be a constant. x3 is known, so this guy will also be a constant. So the only variable in the first equation is x1, all right? And so we can easily solve for x1, and we'll get this, okay? So in the end, using the QR factorization obtained from the... Um, from the classical Gram-Schmidt process, we get this solution vector, okay? So I call it uh, X sub CGS. CGS stands for classical Gram-Schmidt, okay? So para lang ma-distinguish natin yung solutions coming from different algorithms. So you see that this is, uh, I think this is far off from what we have as the actual solution. Remember the actual solution is this. Let me put that here. Okay. So I think actual solution. So yeah. So you see that there is a big discrepancy between the solution we got from the classical Gram-Schmidt and from the actual solution, right? So to give us an idea how big the error, of course, if you're just looking them 
um, looking at them or comparing them visually, you'll see immediately that there is a large discrepancy. Uh, to better describe how big that discrepancy is, we can compute uh, the norm of XCGS minus X star, where X star is the actual solution. Perhaps that's not a good notation because, uh, or anyway, I said here that X star is the actual solution. So whenever describing the error, it's nice to always uh, do it quantitatively. So to measure how big the error is, subtract the computed solution from the actual solution, right? And then measure the norm. You can use any norm, but uh, let's just use the L2 norm because it's uh, it is the most natural norm for us to, uh, uh, yeah, the most natural norm. This is the Euclidean norm. Uh, so matrices, medyo complicado compute yung L2 norm by hand, but we have MATLAB to do that for, uh, for us. So that's fine. So if you compute the error, it's 3.6686. And 3.6886 is a quantity that we would have wanted to be closer to zero, all right? However, um, parang hindi pa rin clear um, if 3.6686 is good enough. I mean, uh, it will always be um, dependent on the size of the thing that you want to, uh, to approximate. So instead of just computing the actual error, because the actual error, we want it to be close to zero as possible, right? But how close to zero is close, right? So how close do we want to be to zero? Well, to, uh, to better quantify the error, we look at the relative error instead. So the relative error, as the name implies, we compute the absolute error or we describe the absolute error with respect to or in relation to the size of the thing that we want to approximate. So in this case, ko computing yung absolute error, pero i-divide ko yung, yung norm na yon by the norm of the actual solution. But what I'll get is sort of a percentage error. So kaya siya relative error because you are measuring the absolute error relative to the size of the thing that you want to measure or to approximate. Okay. So if you do that, compute this ratio, we get 0 0.2891. So we can say that there is about 29% error in the approximation. And I guess this gives us a better uh, better um idea of how big the error is because if you'll just say the raw the raw absolute error say uh sabihin mo lang 3.6686 yung error i don't know what the context of that baka naman kasi yung mini measure ko ang size ay 10,000 so an error of 3.6686 might be good already right but in this case it's not that good kasi if you compute the relative error it's around 29% and of course, we want the relative error to be as close to zero as possible, right? So typically, uh, in most applications, um, in the physical sciences, engineering sciences, and so on, uh, we are happy with about 5% error or less. So yun yung nagiging threshold. Pero if you are in the medical field, usually you want the error to be um, about... Uh, um, just a fraction of a percent. Kasi kailangan mo na mas malaking precision done, right? So it really depends on the application area, how much error you would like. But I don't think there's an application where 29% error is good enough, all right? So lesson here is that the QR factorization from the Gram-Schmidt process or from the classical Gram-Schmidt process is not that good, all right? And let's see why. Bakit kaya hindi ganon kaganda yung approximation from the classical gram schmidt uh, Pero we have seen earlier that the QR factorization that the, gra the classical gram schmidt process gave us is near perfect, right? Kasi yung Q times R is approximately equal to A. So ano kaya yung naging problema along the way? Uh, do you have any guesses? So dito, yung QR factorization, it looks exact. Pero bakit 29% yung nakuha kong error? Any idea where the uh, discrepancy came from? Okay, no ideas? Or perhaps uh, you're just shy to answer? So anyway, uh, last, oh uh, yes, Mamriya. 
Sir, hindi mo ko sure lagi lang po. <laughs> Sir, ba- dahil uh, yung ating upper right uh, triangular po ay uh, round off to the nearest 10,000? 10, 10,000s po. So, hindi po siya yung exact uh, values? Uh, Posible. Though, wala akong way para ma-check yung R. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, Kahit na ground up siya to the nearest uh, how many decimal digits, I'll say, oh, still QR minus A is still approximately equal to zero. So mukhang maganda yung QR factorization kahit na ka-round off na. <laughs> so, any other guesses? Though nice try, ma'am. Uh, any other guesses? A uh, clue. Uh, ito yung isa sa mga chinek natin last time. Diba, remember, I measured two norms. One of the norms that I measured is uh, the norm of QR minus A. What's the other check that we did last time? Aside from checking, do we have a good QR factorization? We also have another check, or we did another check last time. <clears throat> or perhaps you are overthinking the problem. So the other thing that we need to check, remember, is is Q unitary? I so said the promise of a QR factorization is to give us a unitary matrix Q and a right uh, triangular matrix R. If you look at R, it looks fine. Uh, though sabi nga ni Marina, maybe there could be some roundup errors there, which is, uh, which is fine. We can't do anything about it, but we'll just rely on MATLAB performing things to uh, the 16 decimal digits. So I'll trust that this is a good uh, right triangular matrix. So the other problem might be about Q. Is Q really unitary? And it's very important. Why? Because we started with AX equals B, right? Then we said, okay, Q, our factorization must be A. And then we multiply both sides by Q adjoint. All right, and then we said Q adjoint times Q theoretically must be the identity matrix, all right? And that's how we got our X equals Q adjoint times B. But again, we we learned from the uh, from last time that the classical Gram-Schmidt process is um, is ill-conditioned. It's a uh, it's a numerically unstable algorithm, right? So which often result to Q being not even close to a unitary matrix. So we need to check yung Q ba na nakuha natin is close to a unitary matrix. So if I do that check for the result we had from the classical Gram-Schmidt process, I get this guy. So um, the absolute error is 0 0.7818. So uh, yeah, that's the problem. Uh, I'm supposed to divide this by the uh, norm of the identity matrix. Okay, but the norm of the identity matrix is just equal to uh, it's just equal to one. So if it's be on 78% yung layo ni Q from being unitary, and that is nowhere acceptable. So that means that's where the problem came from. So although we have a good uh, we have a good QR factorization in the sense that uh, QR minus A the L2 norm of that residual is equal to zero, but don't forget this other check, especially for the classical Gram-Schmidt process. It means that Q is not even close to being unitary. So it uh, when we perform this multiplication, mm -hmm. okay. we cannot simplify this to the identity matrix because if we do so, um, don't, uh, actually, dito nang galing yung error in multiply uh, in treating Q, Q adjoint times Q to be the identity matrix because Q adjoint Q is not near the identity matrix because there's a 0 0.7818 error. And this is big because the norm of the identity matrix is 1. So that means you can treat it as a 78% error. Kaya maganda rin na tinitingnan nyo yung uh, relative error. Kasi uh, that measures the error relative to the thing that you want to approximate. 
So that means that uh, reduction of the system to Rx equals Q adjoint B is not good because Q adjoint is not near Q inverse. Okay, so that's why people are really avoiding using the classical Gram-Schmidt process in any machine implementation. Okay. So, but luckily we have one way, one other way to to uh, to do the QR factorization, and that's using the classical Gram, uh, the the modified Gram-Schmidt process rather. So for the modified Gram-Schmidt process, we'll use our MATLAB code to give us the Q and the R. Okay. So this would be the Q matrix that we'll get from that factorization. And this is the R matrix that we'll get from that factorization. Okay. And then if you again do uh, QR minus A, the first check, do we have a good factorization? I guess MATLAB will give you a number close to zero for that. But even more, oh, actually, there we go. And even more importantly, Q is near a unitary matrix. If you ask MATLAB to compute the discrepancy of uh, Q adjoint Q from the identity matrix, it will give you a factor of 10 to the minus 16, which is uh, virtually zero from MATLAB's point of view. So because at the end, we have a nice QR factorization, actually an exact one, and Q is nearly a, uh, a unitary matrix. So that means the reduction of AX equals B into RX equals Q adjoint B is valid because uh, Q is actually virtually a unitary matrix, okay? So let's form that system turn the system into Rx equals uh, Q adjoint B. So this is our right triangular matrix, and this is the product of our unitar uh, of the adjoint of our unitary matrix against B, okay? Then again, you can do back substitution. You look, can look at the last row. That will give you X3 equals negative uh, 1.4142 over 0.7071. And then that will give you negative two. Uh, by the way, again, here I just copied what <clears throat> MATLAB displayed. Though you see a negative 1.4142 here, Marami pay and decimal digits, and I used all available decimal digits in computing the quotient. So, hindi ako nag four digit rounding arithmetic tito, like what you did in a uh, homework problem one. So, I used what is, in, uh, what is stored in MATLAB as uh, this entry, all decimal digits that came to with it, divided by this guy, uh, and all the decimal digits that came with 0 0.7071, and I got an answer which is uh, nearly equal to two, or to negative two. And then um, I can turn this, I can replace X3 by negative two, and then I can multiply second row by the entire column, equate the answer to 4.8990. I'll get this using the back substitution and MATLAB gave me exactly 11. Okay. And then since we know X2 and X3, you can fill in this values in the matrix, uh, in the vector of unknown, carry out the multiplication and then solve for X1, you'll get uh, a number close to negative six. So basically, the solution we got from our modified Gram-Schmidt process, the QR factorization induced by the modified Gram-Schmidt process is negative six, 11, and negative two, right? And if you remember, our actual solution is this guy, okay? Negative six, 11, negative two, you see that they look uh, exactly the same up to uh, the machine display, right? But if you want to be more, um, more quantitative about it. So compute the norm of uh, of the error minus uh, x star. So you get a factor of 10 to the minus 17. Oh, I need to check this. I guess I'm not sure if there should be a denominator here. Uh, let's check in MATLAB later. Okay. So Kung absolute error na lang ba yung pinomplit ko or I also computed or I computed the relative error. I forgot uh, which one is which. 
So we'll, when we go to MATLAB, let's check this entry out. So that basically one of those errors, either the absolute error or the relative error, is a factor of 10 to the minus 17, which is um, the best that we can get from machine precision. All right? Okay, any questions so far? I hope uh, QR factorization makes sense. Or have you guys encountered QR factorization before? Kasi usually ang ginagamit natin sa pag-solve ng system ay Gaussian elimination with pivoting or with and or without pivoting. And then, yeah, this is just another way of uh, solving uh, linear systems. So of course, there are other factorizations that you can use. You have Cholesky factorization, you have sure decomposition, and some of other uh, decompositions. But I think QR is uh, the, the simplest among them. And it incorporates one fundamental uh, one fundamental process in linear algebra, the Gram-Schmidt process. That's why I opted to discuss QR factorization. Okay. And then remember, we still have one key, uh, QR factorization trick uh, on our sleeves. We have the householder QR factorization, right? So we did the householder uh, uh, orthogonalization last time, and it also induces a QR factorization. So if we do that, um, we employ the householder QR factorization in MATLAB, we get this as our Q. And then this would be our R. And then I guess if we compute, uh, yeah, if we check if Q is unitary, so it's fine because um, <clears throat> the error is 10 to the minus 16. And then uh, we have a nice QR factorization. So the two crucial things are. Um, um, the two crucial error quantities are very small. So we are answering here the question, is Q actually near unitary? Uh, or I mean, is it unitary up to machine precision? And do we have a good QR factorization, right? So yeah, since those two quantities span out to be very close to zero, uh, the conversion from AX equals B towards Rx equals Q adjoint B uh, is uh, valid or is accurate insofar as uh, machine precision is involved. And so we'll have this system, which again, we can solve by back substitution. And what we'll get would be this. I call it X house, which is a solution from the householder uh, QR factorization. This is a little bit different from the results from the modified Gram-Schmidt process, because in the modified Gram-Schmidt process, we got 11 exactly, the sec, uh, X2 exactly as 11, while uh, negative six and negative two are computed up to machine precision. But if you see the householder approximation, what we got exactly was negative two, and then we got negative 6 and 11 up to machine precision. So, magkaiba sila ng konti, pero both are uh, accurate because the relative error using the householder approximation is just um, 1.5652 times 10 to the minus 16. All right. Okay, so uh, let's see what else. Um, Okay, let's try this in MATLAB. Uh, I'll show you quickly how to modify the MATLAB code that we had last time uh, to solve example 67. All right, so let me go to my MATLAB. Uh, while doing that, uh, do you guys have some questions? Uh, no questions. So I hope you guys can see my screen, my MATLAB screen now. So, uh, hold on, meron daw na sa waiting room. Okay. So going back here. So uh, let's see. 
let me just take a look again at my coefficient matrix. So the coefficient matrix is 1, 1, 1, negative 1, 0, 1, 1, 2. All right. So um, yeah, ito yung nasa equation 69, na coefficient matrix in example 67. And then remember we have EX65. EX65 has the classical Gram-Schmidt algorithm and the modified Gram-Schmidt algorithm. So that should be fine. Okay, so I'll just need to run this in order to get the QR factorization using both methods. So, uh, okay, I'll hit F5. Okay, so it gave me the, uh, it gave me the QR factorization. Everything is in the workspace. So if you look at the, the right portion of my MATLAB screen, you see here the workspace. So you see all the variables that are known to MATLAB right now. So ito yung mga values na nasa memory ni MATLAB. So for instance, uh, MATLAB knows uh, the variable A is assigned to the matrix 1, 1, 1, negative 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2. So even if you shift to another MATLAB script, to another MATLAB file, unless it clear mo yung workspace, ito yung alam ni MATLAB to be the matrix A, right? So and then remember, when we employ the classical Gram-Schmidt process in line seven over here, it returned to us two matrices, QC and RC. QC is what the classical Gram-Schmidt thinks to be a, um, uh, a unitary matrix, and R is what it thinks to be the, the right triangular matrix. So if you look at them, so you can just again click on QC on the workspace, double click on it, and then we'll see how it looks like. What's the coefficient matrix for it? Uh, so, uh, ano yung unitary matrix na nakuha natin from the classical Gram-Schmidt? So this is uh, the same thing as what I have on the notes. So on the module, so you'll see this as our QC and so on. Right? And then if you want to look at RC and check if it's right uh, triangular, yes, it is. So that's our right triangular matrix. Now the same thing for QM and RM. The modified Gram-Schmidt process here uh, is called in uh, line 22. So in line 22, uh, we get back two matrices, QM and RM. QM is the unitary matrix. RM is the right triangular matrix coming from the modified Gram-Schmidt process. Okay. Now to perform the back substitution, I included EX67. But EX67 will only work if you have uh, three unknowns. Um, hindi ko na siya ginawan general. But yeah, this will work for uh, whenever you have uh, uh, three columns in your system. Okay, kasi minanumano ko lang yung pagcompute ng X1, X2, and X3, as you can see in uh, line 16 to, uh, to uh, 18. Though I could have used the for loop. Para ma generalize siya to any number of columns, but I don't think we'll need that uh, too much. So I just program it to have uh, to solve uh, systems with three columns. All right. So what do you need to do here? Well, the first thing is we uh, okay. Uh, probably let's just see how it was written. So if you look at line 11, you need to this uh, to uh, to declare the right hand vector. Uh, B in the system. Let me just check. Yes, in example 67, it's 3, 4, 1. Uh, remember, it should be a 3 by 1 vector. So, kaya may mga semicolons dyan. And then, I need to compute the right-hand side. Remember, we're transforming the system into Rx equals Q adjoint times B. And B is what I call, uh, B new is what I call the Q adjoint times B. Remember, uh, ang pag adjoint sa MATLAB ay uh, apostrophe. So Q apostrophe is basically a Q adjoint for us times the right-hand side vector B. So ito yung magiging bagong right-hand side natin. And then we use that to do the back substitution. 
So remember, in the back substitution, una natin na compute si x3. x3 will just be the third right-hand side entry divided by the uh, entry on the third row and third column of our uh, of our right triangular matrix, right? So if you go back to how we do the or how we did the back substitution by hand, makikita nyo, ah, ito lang yon. Kasi remember, R33, ito yung third row, third column entry, which is the last diagonal entry in your matrix. And then, nakamultiply siya supposedly kay X3, the unknown uh, variable X3, equals the third entry of the new right-hand side. So I'll just need to divide both sides by R33. And then, pag alam ko na yung X3, naka-assign na si X3, pwede ko na siyang gamitin dito to solve for X2. And then, once X2 is computed, I can use both X2 and X3 in order to compute X1. Okay? Uh, but the thing here is that, note here that uh, line 13 requires Q, requires a variable Q. But right now, we don't have a variable Q on our workspace. But Q always stands for the unitary matrix that came from the from the Gram-Schmidt process. So we have two Qs that we compute, one from the classical, we, co we call the QC in our, uh, in our workspace, and then the other one is from the modified Gram-Schmidt, which we called QM, or which we stored as QM coming from our previous calculations. So what I'll do first is to use lines uh, eight and nine, I'll uncomment them. Para irarana na sila ni MATLAB. And here is where I'll assign uh, Q and R. Okay. So in line 13, I need a Q here. I need a Q here. And in line 16, I need an R. Okay. Pero I'll use the classical, the result from the classical Gram-Schmidt as my Q. So Q equals QC. And then I'll use also the right uh, triangular matrix coming from the classical Gram-Schmidt, right? So I'm simply assigning the variable Q to be QC and the variable R to be RC. And that's valid because QC and RC are both on my workspace right now. So alam na sila ni MATLAB. So I re rename ko lang siya to Q and R para magamit siya nung lines 13 to 18. So what do we expect out of this code? Well, this code first will uh, output the new right-hand side. Okay. And then it will also output x3, x2, and x1. I know they will be displayed in the command window because I didn't put any semicolons at the end of uh, this commands or this lines. And then uh, MATLAB will also um, display how far is this from the uh, from the actual solution? So remember, the actual solution we have is negative 6, 11, minus 2. Then I'll compute how far is x1, x2, x3 from it. And then to get the relative error, I divide it by the norm of the actual solution. Okay, And that will be also displayed because I didn't put a semicolon at the end of line 21. Okay, So I'll hit F5 here so that it will run. Let's see, okay. Let's look at the command window output. Okay, so here uh, the, new, the new right hand side is 0, 4.8990 and negative 0.8818. And then in the back substitution, MATLAB got x3 equals minus 0. 0.776, x2 is 7.9441, and x1 is negative 4.3796. And again, the relative error or the residual is about 29%, which is exactly what we got in the uh, in the handout. Okay. So again, this is not a good uh, a good a good way to solve the system because again, you always want to avoid the classical Gram-Schmidt process from machine calculations because it is inherently ill-posed. Okay, or it's uh, inherently numerically unstable. So let's try uh, the um, 
the factorization coming from the modified Gram Schmidt process. So all I need to do here is to go back to lines eight and nine. Instead of assigning QC to be the Q and RC to be the R, let's just change it to M, uh, to QM and RM. And that's fine because uh, QM and RM are already on my workspace. I got them by running ex65.m, the QR factorization. Uh, okay. So let's hit F5. Yun lang yung kailangan kong baguhin. Assigning Q and R. Hit F5. Then here's what we get. The new right-hand side vector is 0, 4.8990 and negative 1.4142. And then X3 is negative 2. X2 is 11. So uh, remember, when MATLAB displays a number like this, it means that it didn't compute exactly negative 2, but up to machine precision after rounding off, it got negative 2. Actually, not machine precision, pero yung display precision niya, four decimal digits lang. So at least we're sure that X3 is equal to negative 2 up to four decimal digits, or even more, uh, depending on machine uh, precision. But you look at X2, it is assigned to 11. That means that MATLAB computed X2 to be exactly 11. And then lastly, X1 is negative 6 up to display precision. And true enough, the relative error is 7.8260 times 10 to the minus 17. And that reminds me, uh, please go back to uh, the module. If you go on page, ito yung sabi ko, i-check natin. Sa page 32, yung 7.8260 times 10 to the negative 6, uh, to the negative 17 is actually uh, the norm of XMGS. Uh, maybe I can show it to you. So, tama. Uh, this one should be. They should have the the relative error. So, divided nasha by the residual of the actual value. Okay. So, any questions uh, so far? No questions. Uh, guys, naka-on pa ba yung, ano, yung MATLAB screen ko? Hindi ko na siya makita. <laughs> sir, hindi na po. Ay, hindi na, na sir. So, na, wala na. Okay po. I-ano ko lang po ulit. I-share ko yun. Okay, thank you. Share ko yung MATLAB screen ko. Okay, let's try the householder uh, approach. Ah, uh, okay na ba? Naka-display na ba yung MATLAB screen ko? Yes, sir. Naka-display na, sir. Okay, thank you po. So, okay. Now, the other problem, uh, the other one is to use uh, the uh, the uh, householder um, factorization. And I remember we have a different code for it. So, uh, kung hindi nyo nagagamitin yung values sa workspace, or yeah, you don't anticipate using the variables you already have in your workspace, in your new calculations, you can just um, type clear in the command window and then press enter. You'll see that the workspace will be cleared. It's especially helpful if you will be running different MATLAB scripts successively na hindi naman connected yung mga variables na gagamitin. So, kasi once na may mayroon ka natira ng, ng variable A dun sa workspace, Tapos yung isa mong bagong code na ilaran will look for a matrix A. Posible magkaroon ka ng problema kasi isipin ni MATLAB ang gusto mong gamitin ay yung matrix A na nasa workspace. So if you don't need the variables in your workspace, in your current uh, in your current simulation, i-clear nyo yung workspace para hindi nyo yung gamitin. Right? And also, if you are annoyed by the lots of displays in the command window, you can type CLC. CLC will clear the command window. So, mawawala lahat ng mga naka-display dun sa command window. So, that's why usually, if I'm coding something in MATLAB, I always start my code with 
CLC follow uh, yeah clear and then followed by CLC para uh, I'm I'm starting from a clear workspace and a clear command window okay so let's try the householder approach which we have seen to also work so baguhin ko lang to householder so comment, comment down ko lang yung line 3 kasi ang kailangan ko dito ay yung kasa that's a line 2 na matrix. Ito uli yung matrix galing sa example 67, 111, negative 1, 0, 1, 1, 2. And remember that if I run uh, ex66.m, hit F5, it will give me the QR decomposition using the householder algorithm, which you can see here at the bottom, at the end of the script. So, and then it gives me a QR factorization wherein the unitary matrix is assigned to the to the variable Q and R uh, and the right triangular matrix is assigned to the variable R. So remember, eh, pero yung pang back substitution ko nasa kabilang MATLAB script, nasa ex67.m. So what I'll do is to switch to ex67.m, all right? Pero I won't. Kasi kailangan ko yung at R na nanggaling kay ex66.m, right? And then, kailangan kong i-comment yung lines 8 and 9. Why? Because I don't want to reassign Q and R to other variables. Because the householder algorithm that we run earlier already assigned the unitary matrix to the variable Q and the right triangular matrix to the variable R. So, yun yung nasa workspace. So, hindi ko na kailangan yung lines 8 and 9. Hindi ko na sila kailangan i-redefine. I have the same right-hand side vector 3, 4, 1 for that system. And everything now looks good. I just need to hit F5. And here we go. If you look at the command window. Okay. So, this is uh, the new right-hand side. I think right-hand side is a joint times B. And then do the back substitution. Back substitution will give us x3 equals exactly negative 2. x2 is uh, around 11. And x1 is around negative 6. And then if you look at the residual or the relative error, the relative error is 1.5652 times 10 to the minus 16, which is very good. Minus 16, that means whenever you have a number, which is a factor of 10 to the minus 16, that means it is virtually equal to zero from the machine point of view. Okay, now let's see. Um, I also have example uh, 68. Okay, maybe I'll switch to a little module here. Okay, but any questions about the MATLAB implementation? Because I think you can use uh, that in one of the homework problems. I'm not sure, but yeah, you can simply modify it uh, to solve some of the homework problems. Okay, so uh, I'm going back to the uh, to the module to look at example 68. Okay, so uh, it says here that the nice thing about the QR factorization is that it doesn't require square. So it even if we have a triangular, uh, sorry, a rectangular coefficient matrix. So if we have, say, this is our coefficient matrix, uh, A, and then let's consider the right hand side 2461 in example 70. Okay. And then the thing here is we cannot compute uh, we cannot compute A inverse because obviously A is not invertible because it is not even square at all. So 
hindi na natin magagamit yung solution na x equals a inverse b. So what we'll try to do is to use um, uh, a QR factorization. But here I noted na uh, a is of rank um, less than or equal to 3, which is less than or equal to the dimension of r to the fourth of your right hand side. So if you look at the rank of a, remember ang rank ni a ay at most the minimum between the number of rows and columns. So here we have four rows and three columns. So that means that their minimum is equal to three. So the rank is at most three. And remember, what is the rank? The rank is the dimension of the range. So ito lang yung number of basis elements para dun sa span ng matrix A. So ibig sabihin, gano kalaki yung vector space AX? or does the range of A. So it says here that based on our analysis, it is at most three. But the right hand side is coming from R4, right? And the dimension of R4 is equal to four. So ibig sabihin, ibig sabihin nito, uh, hindi lahat ng right hand side will give us a solution. Because uh, the matrix A, only produces a vector space of dimension at most three. Di pa nga tayo sure kung equal kay three, but if you can, if you will compute it in MATLAB, yeah, I think it's equal to three. But the rank of A is equal to three. If it's a yung dimension, yung vector space form by multiplying A to any element of R three is just dimension three. So that means that is not the entire R four. So here we should be wary about the right hand side because some right hand sides will not give us a solution because they might not be in the range of the matrix A. So meaning it might be impossible to get a matrix, uh, to get a vector X such that AX equals B for some right hand side vector B. Because again, and dimension ng set ng lahat ng AX ay equal kay three. Pero ang dimension ng right-hand side ay 4. So ibig sabihin, there could be some elements of R4 that cannot be written as A times some vector X. So in particular, the right-hand side B that I chose, 2, 4, 6, 1, is not in the range of A. Isa siya dun sa mga, isa siya dun sa mga wala dun sa range ni A. So it would be impossible to get a vector x coming from R3 such that Ax is equal to B. So this is the classic case for over-determined systems if you have more equations than unknowns. So if you go back here, we have, if you will write it as a linear system, you will have four equations but only three unknowns. Kasi tatlo lang yung columns ni A. So it is uh, most likely you'll get an inconsistent system or a system with no solution, all right? And that was the case for the right-hand side 2461. Because unfortunately, again, 2461 is not in the range of A. So we go to the next best thing and try to see how, how close can we get to 2461, okay? So I, uh, instead of looking for a vector x such that ax equals b, we look for a vector x such that ax is as close as possible to b because that's the best thing that we can do, all right? So um, QR factorization might help us with that. So QR factorization, okay? So I'll jump here on page 36. Medyo delayed yata yung naproproject sa, sa Teams. Pero yeah, let's wait. Hindi pa rin, rin nag-update, no? Nasa page 35 pa rin siya. I'm already on page 36. But on, yeah, there we go. On page 36, you can use the QR factorization we got from example 66. And I guess this is the same matrix we use in example 66. So nakita na natin to sa MATLAB. Ito yung uh, Q na ibibigay ni householder. 
Then ito yung R na ibibigay ni householder. There. And then if we use this Q and R, remember Q and R are um, a good factorization for A. We have seen earlier or last time that the norm of QR minus A is close to zero. And then the norm of Q adjoint times Q minus the identity matrix is also close to one, Signal, uh, is close to zero, signaling that Q is indeed nearly uh, unitary. Actually, it is exactly unitary. Kasi by hand ko siya kinumpute dito. Okay. And then, again, we can transform the system using our QR trick here. Um, and then you'll see, you'll end up with this equation over here, this system. And then we can do back substitution, all right? But you'll see right away that this is an inconsistent system. Because if you look at the fourth equation, zero is equal to negative 3.5, which is uh, actually false. So if this is a solution by hand, or if this is a problem from high school, you'll give up right away and say, okay, uh, forget about it. There's no solution. The solution set is empty. But in most applications, we are dealing with, we are always dealing with uh, rectangular systems, overdetermined systems. So what we're looking for is the vector x that will make ax as close as possible to b. So we won't stop here and see how close can we get to the right hand side b, or how good, or how good will the, the vector x that will come from this insofar as approximating the right hand side b. Okay. So we'll just ignore the, four equa uh, the fourth equation, but that signals to us that the right-hand side is not in the range of A. If this was a zero, then that's fine. The, the system is valid, uh, is consistent, and that means that the right-hand side is in the range of the matrix, and we can, get, um, we can get a very good value for X. But unfortunately, again, uh, the, the fourth, uh, equation is a contradiction, so we'll just ignore it and do the back substitution here and see how close can we get to the right hand side, all right? So solving for x1, x2, and x3 using back substitution will give us x sub house that we have in page 37. Say natin magload yung screen. Mukhang magkaibang network na naman yung kinabitan ko with my iPad and laptop. But anyway, so, uh, di pa rin yata siya naglo-load. But essentially, X house is minus 5.625, 2.75, and 0.125. Hold on, ulitin ko na nga lang para makita niyo. Hold on guys, stop presenting. Okay, there we go, finally. So this is the, uh, the solution I got from the back substitution. However, if I check the matrix A times the solution I got, I get 3, 3, 3.5 and 3.5. But this is far, at least uh, uh, looking at it visually, from the right hand side that we expect, which is 2, 4, 6, 1. Remember, 2461 is the right hand side that we're looking for. All right. So, and true enough, if we compute for the relative error, you see that the relative error is about 50%, 50.44%. So, really, we didn't get a very good solution coming from 
the uh, QR factorization, and that is expected because the right-hand side is not in the range of A. I'm betting that if I chose uh, a right-hand side that is in the range of A, then I could have gotten a very good solution, X of house, right? Because the householder transform is, uh, or the householder algorithm is a stable algorithm for QR factorization, okay? But yeah, so some other algorithms might be able to give us better solution, but actually the best solution that you can get is what we, what, uh, the pseudo inverse will give. So how do we get the pseudo inverse? I'll just mention it in passing because we don't have um, enough time to uh, to introduce another uh, section to it. But basically, the pseudo inverse work with, with uh, this way. It works for a rectangular and uh, um, non-singular. Uh, sorry, it works for rectangular and even for non-singular matrices. Actually, it will also work for uh, singular matrices and usually ginagamit din siya for uh, kahit invertible yung matrix kasi efficient yung pagcompute ng pseudo inverse and let's see how it is computed so we begin with ax equals b and then what we'll do is to multiply both sides by or pre multiply both sides by a adjoint so nag multiply ako dito ng a adjoint Nag-multiply ako dito ng A adjoint. All right? Uh, the thing here is, hindi natin alam kung si A ay unitary. So, A adjoint A might not be the identity matrix. But the nice thing is that linear algebra, or probably you have seen this in your previous courses, linear algebra tells us that this is always invertible. A adjoint times A is always square, and it's always invertible. So that's why I can multiply both sides by the inverse of A adjoint times A, correct? And get this solution. X sub N is equal to this guy, correct? Kasi magmultiply ako dito ng A adjoint A quantity inverse to both sides. So, and then computing this guy actually is numerically stable and uh, usually computers or programs Computer programs have a very nice and efficient algorithm how to compute this inverse. So usually, mas madaling kunin ng inverse ang um, A adjoint A kesa kay A, except for special cases when, when A has a very nice form. But in general, A, uh, A, A adjoint times A is easier to, uh, uh, it's easier to find its inverse than the matrix A. And this guy is usually called the pseudo inverse of A, denoted by A plus or A dagger. So because when you can think of it as X sub N to be A plus times B, where A plus is the pseudo inverse, defined this way, okay? And the pseudo inverse will exist even if you have uh, a rectangular matrix. Kasi kung ang A may M by N, yung A adjoint, which, which is the conjugate transpose, will be N by M. So if you multiply A adjoint by A, you'll get N by N. And that N by N matrix will always have an inverse. Okay? So kaya lagi siyang invertible, so the pseudo inverse will always be defined. Okay? And uh, yeah, Actually, the pseudo inverse will give us the best solution with respect to the L2 norm. So, ibig sabihin yung solution using the, the pseudo inverse. So, pag kinumpute mo yung AX minus or AX sub N minus B, L2 norm, this is minimum. So, meaning, uh, even if B is not in the, uh, is not in the range, of the matrix A, if you are using the pseudo inverse, then you are guaranteed that you are getting the best solution with respect to the L2 norm. Kasi yung pseudo inverse ang magbibigay ng pinaka ng solution na may pinaka maliit na L2 error, right? 
um, advanced linear algebra courses or optimization courses will tell you that that is true. So siya yung magbibigay ng best L2 norm. Even if your uh, right hand side B is not in the uh, is it, it's not in the range of your matrix A. Okay. So uh, and by the way, some nomenclature here. This uh, equation is what we call the normal equation. So if you did the uh, numerical linear algebra in your undergrad, you might have encountered this. The normal equation is just obtained by multiplying your linear system or pre multiplying your linear system by the conjugate uh, transpose of your matrix A. And as I mentioned here, uh, the pseudo inverse gives us the best solution with respect to the L2 norm. And then uh, actually, MATLAB has an intrinsic command on how to compute uh, uh, the least square solution or X sub N for your system A. Of course, sabi natin, you can compute it uh, the long way. You can have X equals uh, A adjoint A inverse A adjoint uh, B. Ito yung ibibigay na solution ng pseudo inverse, which minimizes the L2 norm of the error. So you can just type it in MATLAB uh, um, based on this formula. But luckily, MATLAB has a one-liner solution for it. So if you have a system AX equals B, you want the pseudo inverse solution, then you'll just need to type this one in MATLAB. Okay. So it's X equals A uh, backslash B. So this is the backslash operator. So hindi siya yung usual fraction for division. It's a backslash. So x equals backslash uh, a backslash b. This will give us a adjoint a inverse a adjoint b, right? So yung kino compute niya. Actually, MATLAB encourages the use of backslash instead of this. So this is the solution for the inverse. So x equals inverse of a times b. Ito yung usual way natin ng pagsasolve. But MATLAB always encourages users to use this guy, the backslash uh, solution, instead of the uh, instead of the inversion solution. Okay, because anyway, if b is in the range of uh, uh, actually if uh, if a is invertible. Yung solution using this will coincide with the solution using the backslash operator. Kapag kasi ay invertible, parehas lang yung makuha yung solution. But the thing is that the backslash operator is much more stable and much more efficient than the inverse uh, function. So kaya mas gusto pa rin ni MATLAB na ipagawa mo sa kanya backslash kesa inverse, especially for large matrices. Kasi uh, unstable and hindi ganun computationally efficient yung A inverse. So you always do this. And if you apply this syntax to our, uh, to our, um, to our existing problem at hand, you'll get this as the normal solution, X sub N, is this guy. And if we compute for the relative error, you see that we get a 46% relative error, which is still high. But this is the best that we can do in so far as the L2 norm is concerned. So, wala ka ng solution na makukuha which will have a relative error better than 0.4636. Ito na best in so far as the L2 norm is concerned. Okay, And you see that this is about 4% better than the householder QR factorization. But again, this is the best that we can do. The problem mainly is that because B is not in the range of the uh, the matrix A. Okay. And I guess I ask you to do this in the homework. So I guess uh, I can go to the homework now. I think that's what you need to do in problem two. Okay. Do the householder approximation or the householder uh, solution. Okay, and compute this relative error. Uh, that's fine. You can use uh, the uh, the bunch of MATLAB codes that I uh, that I sent you as your basis for this. And then 
Yeah, I also ask you to compute Ay equals C, where C is this matrix, which is essentially very close to the B here, the B value that you get here. Okay. And here you you should also uh, for for solving this you can still use the QR factorization you got for A because hindi naman nagbago yung uh, matrix A ang nagbago lang yung right hand side so you can still use the QR decomposition from the householder you you used for the first part of the problem and then uh, just use the back substitution but this time the right hand side is this uh, vector C. And then again, uh, I ask you here to uh, to comment whether Y sub house is a good solution, and you need to answer it quantitatively, uh, or you can justify your answer by computing the relative error. So you can say, ah, oh, since the relative error is just say 10% or 5%, it's still good. Um, and then here, if Y house is not a good solution. If you have, uh, if Y house is a good solution, then of course you don't need to answer the follow up question. But if Y house turns out to be not a good solution, then what do you think is the problem? Uh, what is the best solution to double star with respect to the L2 norm? Okay. So, ibig sabihin kung hindi maganda yung Y house, uh, meron siya on supposedly na problem. And based on that problem, uh, can you give me the best solution with respect to the L2 norm? Okay. And then for problem three, uh, you'll use the 100 by 100 Hilbert matrix. And remember, the 100 by 100 Hilbert matrix is just, uh, you can call it via MATLAB, it's HILB, comma 100, uh, parentheses 100. And then, yeah, you just need to solve the system using two ways, using the actual inversion procedure and using the pseudo inverse procedure, all right? So the inverse procedure, uh, it's a, nasulat ka naman sa module yung syntax for A inverse, it's I and V of A. So you just compute the solution using the inverse and then compute the solution using the pseudo inverse. So you can use the backslash notation and compare which one is better, the solution using the inversion procedure or using the uh, the pseudo inverse, okay? So I guess that's it. Um, I guess you are ready to uh, to finish homework six, uh, but the deadline is on Sunday, uh, right before midnight. I already graded uh, all the homework, um, homework fives uh, by last night, submitted last night unless you submitted after 10 p.m. So what I'll do in the next couple of days would be to uh, to grade those um, those uh, past due homeworks, past due with quotes. So well, I don't deductions if you are still working on the previous homework. So try to finish them. Uh, I'll be strict about the deadline. The deadline for submitting everything would be on August 9th, right? 11.59 p.m. And also on uh, 11, 15, uh, sorry, on August 9th, I will also give homework seven, the last homework, which will do by the finals week, but I encourage you to submit them as soon as you can so that I can give you your final grade. So once you submit homework seven, hopefully uh, in a couple of hours, I can grade it. And then once I graded it, I will also input my proposed or my computed final grade for you. And then uh, you can uh, you can comment or you can ask me why your grade is that. If you're not satisfied, tell me why, and then we can uh, we can talk about it. But uh, yeah, that's why I want you to submit it submit it as soon as you can because kung tapos na lahat ng requirements nyo, tap na pasa nyo na yung homework seven, I can give you my computed grade, and then you can ask me questions about it. But again, I will only entertain questions about the final grades. Uh, until the last day for submitting grades, because after I submit the grades, uh, I won't entertain any appeals and so on unless I made a mistake in computing your your grades. But other than that, I won't accept any other uh, inquiries about the grades. All right. So I hope our timetable is clear.
and I hope uh, you guys are working on the uh, the other problems uh, the, the from previous homeworks. Uh, but I guess there are about uh, almost half of the class is up to date. So mukhang uh, daw mahirapan the last uh, the next couple of days to grade all those backlogs. But yeah. Okay, so I think this would be. Uh, do you guys have any questions before we wrap up? Well, any questions? So this would be the last uh, synchronous meeting. But if you have some questions, you can send them to me via chat or via email. So um, yeah, and then yeah, thank you for all your effort throughout the semester for your patience and for bearing up for bearing with me. Uh, I hope you got uh, some new things from this course, uh, and then that will help you uh, not necessarily in how you teach it, but at least you found some new portions of math that you might not have encountered in your undergrad or in your master's. So that's my only hope. I, I hope that you get some bits and pieces from this class. All right. So yeah, though unfortunately, this course was uh, designed not to help you in your teaching, because it's a shang math course. So it's a technical course. It's not an edu course. So uh, sorry if you expected that you will learn pedagogical skills on how to teach linear algebra when you uh, when you go to teach it in your in your respective schools. But the course description that was handed to me is that it is a technical course. It's a math course after all. It's not an edu course. So I stick to. Uh, I stick to the technical details of it, right? So the thing here is to develop your critical thinking skills using linear algebra tools and objects, but essentially, yeah. And I would have wanted to, uh, to uh, or I wanted to share something new to you. So I hope you got at least one or two new things that you haven't encountered before, all right? So I guess that's the end of the semester for us. Of course, pending your submission of your, uh, of your, uh, of your homeworks, uh, homework 7 again will be available August 9, probably by uh, uh, early in the morning. And I promise it won't take you more than a day to finish it. So you can, uh, uh, if you're done with homework 6, you can relax a little bit and wait and just wait for homework 7. All right. So uh, if there are no other questions, then that's it from me, guys. Uh, thank you for the semester. I really had some fun on this semester. So I hope you did too. So yeah, see you around, guys. Bye. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, but if you have questions with the homeworks, uh, just let me know. Send them to me via chat or via email. All right, guys. Bye. Bye, sir. Thank you. Thank you.